Joyful way. Shout. 
Sister Kathy and uh, Sister Terrence, their brothers, their rules that come and shriek. Uh, some of the ushers were there, went over to be with them, uh, to support them. And then we had other Stonewall Snip services here. Uh, and they were back here along with our other team serving. Uh, then we had our men's conference going that morning. And so everybody just did a great job serving and making themselves available. So I just think about it. And you all have been so kind, loving and support on yesterday. Uh, Doug and Paul, of course, will be with you here and introduce the speaker here in a minute. I'll make sure you ask this. Um, but this is my thank you here, our men's ministry for putting the men's conference together on yesterday. But let's be a blessing. 
workshop, our evangelism workshop. That's going to happen in July. Don't forget to get signed up for that. And by the way, July is our youth month. Uh, so we want to get our youth involved in sharing their faith as well. Amen. Let's train them up early. But they're talking about everything else. And I think they're talking about everything else. I have another year old, and she's talking about everything else. So let's teach them to talk about the Lord as well. Amen. 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 And the world is going to introduce them to all of the stuff that, is, that they introduce them to. Then let's teach them to introduce the world to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So let's get
on push pay. Um, that's our new membership platform. That's how we communicate uh, through email, through text. Uh, that's where all of our registrations will be moving to shortly. So we want to get everyone signed up now. Thank you to those that have already done so. Uh, but you should have received a card on entering uh, the sanctuary. Please, please, please use that. Use that uh, to get registered on today. To get registered on today. Uh, and push pay so that we can continue to communicate with you. Amen? Amen. We'll have Brother Walker here to introduce our speaker. Um, for the hour, and then we'll have song, and then we'll hear from Pastor Dennis. Yes, amen. Good morning. There we go. We got to work now. Good morning, St. Paul. All right, all right. I've been tasked with introducing our guest speaker today, and first, we have another guy. First, I want to ask the men over there yesterday, did you enjoy yourself yesterday? Yeah. I said, well, Matthew Davis, Pastor Matthew Davis has served as pastor of New Beginning Church in Houston, Texas since September 7, 2004. He earned his doctorate of transformational leadership degree from Bakken Graduate University. Pastor Davis is an adjunct professor at Bakken Graduate University and O'Connor. Uh, I got it right. Uh, Bible Institute. As an avenue to reach the world for Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel, which was written in 2001, the workbook written by Matthew Davis has been presented in several translations in Czech, English, Lua, Portuguese, Spanish, Swahili, French, and Hindi. In 2023, Pastor Davis became the lead and visionary author of the evangelistic training book, Sharing the Gospel, Good News on the Go. He and his wife have served as missionaries to Brazil and the Czech Republic. He is also a missionary to Belize. Pastor Davis is the father of two daughters, Megan and Macy. He proudly shares the ministry our responsibilities with his wife, Carol, who was the former Carol Moore, whose musical gifts keep the youth and music industries as well. Now, from the official introduction, now we give you the first one. Uh, Pastor Dave and I have known each other since the seventh grade, a long time. And uh, of course, uh, we graduated together from high school from the mighty, mighty Ginger High Rams.
Mississippi if you're from Mississippi. There are two things you can count when you're from Mississippi. You can count on good hospitality. And you can count on some good luck showing up to the church. When you cross the line into the Mississippi area,
I want to thank his wife for keeping him up and encouraging him. He has been my leader for over 43 years. And he has been an awful leader. Well, I do know that this is the safe haven for many from the Mississippi Delta. If you would, if you're from the Mississippi Delta, please stand where you are. If you're from the Mississippi Delta, I will. 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 That the greatest people in the Delta came through Gentry High School. Hallelujah. Well, thank my family for being here. Some of them, I think I see my little sister who thinks she's my big sister and my cousin in the back. They, they think they can tell me what to do, so I just do it and keep them happy. I have a big mom and a little mom. So I want to thank God. I want to thank God for these men. I want uh, to thank God for trusting and bringing it with these men on yesterday. And, and God tremendously blessed us and I was blessed and, and being with them and sharing with them and them sharing with me. Paul Bryant was standing, Paul Bell Bryant was standing on the side where I was one day. They were very heated game. And one of the running backs ran, or the opposite team ran past him with crazy speed. Paul Brown said, next year I'm going to give me some of those. You get to ask somebody to look at him. They explain that to me. So as I sit and I fellowship with these men, one conclusion that I've come to, when I get back to Houston, I'm going to give me some of those. He's going to be awesome and amazing. Uh, thank you, St. Paul, for your hospitality. Uh, I need to see, I need to see Sister White. Sister White is good. Thank you so much, Sister White. She made sure that I, I got here, made sure that I obeyed the pastor's orders, and, and she really set me straight. So I want to thank her for, for, uh, for making all the arrangements for, for this meeting. Amen. Thank you so much. Let me look at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5. I grew up with the prophets, the prophets, and I want to thank them for, for being kind to me. Mark chapter 5, I'll be reading verses 1 through 6, and then verse number 15. Reading from the New King James Version, Mark chapter 5 in the New Testament. Verses 1 through 6, when you found it, you discovered these words. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Galileans. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could find him, not even the chain. Because he had been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, day and night, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar. When he saw Jesus from afar. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. Verse 15 says, Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right eye. And they were afraid. 
I want to talk about good news from the graveyard. Good news from the graveyard. We look at news, we look at the internet, and we always hear and see bad news. All around us, even today, as we are in worship, I'm not out there, but I can guarantee you that there is some bad news. The 5 o'clock report, the 12 noon report, the 3 o'clock report, the 5.30 report will all give you bad and terrible news. Some people have gotten to the point in their lives where they will not watch the news because it tears them apart to see what is really going on because it is filled with bad news. I came by here on my way to the rapture to let you know that there is good news and it even comes from the graveyard. When we look at the text, when we look at the text, there is more and more of bad news. When we move out of Mark chapter 4 and go into Mark chapter 5, we realize even before we make it to chapter 5, we have some bad news on both. There's a storm raging, and there is a there is a wind, there are winds that are blowing, and Jesus stands and Jesus says, Peace. And the wind and the waves obey him. Thank God for Jesus. He, he stands and the winds and the waves shut down. And when they shut down, even disciples had to ask the question, what matter a man is this? I want to answer that question for the disciples today. He's not just any old man. He's just not a prophet, as some would say. He's not just a normal man, he is the God man, he is God himself, who made his way down through 42 generations, and as he made his way down through 42 generations, he was placed in a body in a marriage, a woman who had never been with a man, he is not only God, but he's the son of God. Well, 
joy in the graveyard. Not only is he, is he a man that's living in the graveyard, he has graveyard mentality simply because he has become comfortable there. How do you know? Because when they shackled him and they chained him, he broke the shackles and the chain and into pieces. And let me tell you, when you got graveyard mentality, you got supernatural power. I want to tell you today, the fact of the matter is the devil is mighty. The devil is strong, and you can't handle the devil on your own. Yes, the devil is mighty, but our God is almighty. The God of Easter is the almighty God. He's the God that watches us and keeps hold of us. And when you find yourself in the graveyard with graveyard mentality, you need to look to Jesus. Graveyard mentality. You can tell when a man has graveyard mentality. He would leave a good woman for a proof. Pray God in You can tell when a man is not at his best behavior when he drives by the house and not go in the house. Now, sisters, I don't know what you call him to have great God in town or not, but the fact of the matter is, for whatever reason, something else out there is calling him and is more appealing to him. Don't leave the man. When children take stuff and shoot in their arm that, that controls them, that's graveyard mentality. When students think that being a nerd is something that they should not be because of peer pressure, that's graveyard mentality. And let me just drop this in your spirit right now. The fact of the matter is, what you call a nerd five years from now, you call him boss. So it's not a problem with being a nerd. You better get your lesson now. You know, there are three things, three different entities are the most lied on entities in the world. First of all, God. Secondly, the devil. And now, COVID. Can I tell you again? God, the devil, and COVID. First of all, we got super, super spiritual saints that will say, God told me. Secondly, you got those who don't want to be anywhere around church or church people that will say the devil made me. And now that COVID is on the scene, they can go anywhere they want to go, but when it comes to church, I ain't going down there because COVID is back. Pastor, they act like you met the fact of COVID and you at the church. I ain't going down there. I mean, they go to every family, every baby shop. They go everywhere and they at work before work stops. And, and they come riding in the church because we are done with Captain COVID here. I'm telling you, they suffer from graveyard mentality. When you suffer from graveyard mentality, you can tell yourself a lot so long until you begin to believe in yourself. I'm here today to encourage the men to, to know that graveyard mentality set in. But I believe that every now and then all of us go by the graveyard. And every now and then we, we make sure that we spend time in the graveyard, the graveyard mentality, and this graveyard mentality has even shown up at the local church. What are you talking about, preacher? When you're at the door and you're ushering and somebody walks in and you don't have a frown on your face, that's graveyard mentality. When you sit beside somebody and your lips in your mouth looks like you just got some, some white syrup seed, that's graveyard mentality. When the preacher has to boost you and pump you and the plot has to sing to you and you don't want to tell people that God is good, that's graveyard mentality. We got children today that tell mom and dad where to go, where to get off and what to do. Let me tell you, I grew up and I didn't have that privilege. I was telling the men on yesterday, Mama came 600 miles to tell me what to do. I'm saying to myself, Mama, when you going home? I said, I said it to myself. I didn't say it to her because we didn't grow up like that. I told you about this again. There about 20 people flocked in our house, and you had people in the kitchen talking, people in the men talking, people in the living room talking. The TV is on. When I walk in, I walk downstairs, I walk and I know there's no one looking at the TV, this is my house. Nobody's looking at the TV, I reach up for the remote, I turn the TV off, 
And before I could say anything, it got quiet in the house. Mama asked the question, who turned that TV off? And mom right, the one that's supposed to be my best friend said, he did. Mama then said, she said to me, turn that TV back on. I didn't say a mama word, I reached for the remote, I turned the TV back on and carried myself with my head hanging down about upstairs. I can't sit down from Now, when, I, when she left me, I went before the congregation, I told this story, and I said to them, I'm full grown. I said after she went back home. Get to 
to the point where you can get out of the graveyard. So, my last point, and I'll be finished with my little speech. You have graveyard in town. You have graveyard suffering. But you have graveyard deliverance. I, I stopped by telling you and encourage you today and hang in there, don't give up. If you thought about suicide, don't do it. If you're depressed, depend on Jesus because Jesus is a deliverer.
not have life. So in other words, we need, we need Jesus. Well, how do, how do I get Jesus? Paul makes it simple. Confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Born of a virgin birth. Then he died for forgiveness of our sins. And on the third day morning that God brings them from the dead. The word of God says that if you confess and believe that, then you are, you are saved. Someone may be saying, well, I'm going to get myself together. You can't get yourself together. I say it all the time, if you could get yourself together, you would already be together. As a matter of fact, God says this in his word. While we were yet sinned, God commended, he demonstrated his love towards us in sending his son, Jesus Christ. He loves you. And he wants to save you. But you have to be willing. Of course, this is what God is going to say. If you are here, you can come right now today as a good day. Maybe you already saved. Maybe you're already saved. And you're looking for a church home. It's not an accident that you were here all today and you heard the message that we heard.
I'm thinking that there's good news even when we're dealing with bad situations. And Father, that good news is you. So Father, we just thank you more today. Continue to bless these, your people. Make your face to shine and to smile upon them. Father, just continue to watch over them and keep them, Father. We come praying now, Father, that you get a traveling grace. We go down from this place, Father. I ask that you just keep us and take care of us. Father, dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now and forevermore. Let every heart say,